What's up, hobby friends, and welcome to my video series on how I'll be painting my Blood Angels for the Horus Heresy. This is going to be the first of a couple of videos. So this first one will cover how I paint my basic infantry. So anything from tactical squads to assault squads, even the Dawn Breakers, basically anything that's red armored will be covered in this video in terms of the recipes and the techniques. And I don't differentiate between the line infantry and the heroes. So when I get to things like painting my Vigilator or my Praetor, all the techniques, the recipes are exactly the same. I just spend a little bit more time to polish um, the blending and I paint more of the little details, largely because they're character models and you want to spend the time on them. When you're painting line infantry, you have like 20 or 30 marines to paint. Um, you want to simplify the process and get them on the tabletop as quickly as possible. At least that's my approach for this army and that's the way I'll be approaching the techniques. So with that caveat in mind, you're gonna notice that I don't do certain things when I'm painting my Blood Angels army. Um, I don't do any sort of crazy edge highlighting when I've built the models themselves and not covered in detail. And where there is extra detail, that's usually how I denote more elite infantry. So when you compare a tactical Marine to an assault Marine to a Dawnbreaker, you're gonna notice a progression of detail on the models and then all the way up to the characters who will have quite a bit more detail. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to build our miniatures. And you can see here, let's grab model. So for this infantry tutorial, I'll be painting my Dawnbreaker Sergeant. And you can see that I've got him built. And uh, right now he's blue tacked to a temporary base. So the reason that I do this is because I'll be painting the base in this nifty blue zone mortalis scheme, but I'll be airbrushing the armor red rather than do some crazy masking or any sort of um, fancy work. By keeping them separate, I can airbrush both components together. Blaze is in blue, armor in red, and then I can paint the bases without having to worry about a model on top. Once they're painted, um, I can then glue the model on top and then finish painting the entire thing. With my bases, because I do magnetize them, an easy way that I can sort of assembly line them is actually to use one of the movement traits for my table work cases. Because they've got the magnetic sheet on already, all I can do is lay down some paper on top of the tray, stick the magnets on, and I can just very quickly assembly line through all of the bases one after another without having to swap any crazy handles or anything fancy like that. So when you see me working on the bases and I walk through it in the clip ahead, you'll see me working on several of them at the same time. For this first part with the airbrush, I will be using my Infinity CR Plus. And then because we're not gonna be worrying about any crazy um, hyper accurate blends, with the airbrush, I'll be using my 0.4 millimeter needle. And you can see here the end result sort of what we're going for with the airbrush. I've also done an oil wash already, so there's a bit of a, a black lining already happening on this miniature. But you can see that the blend isn't anything crazy. It's more just a lay down an initial top to bottom highlight that hits about the midtone. So we're getting to about AK blood red for this, and that's only about halfway before we want to take the armor. So with the airbrush, I'm going to start by laying down a couple of base coats and highlights on the base and then the infantry. For the base on top of the black primer, I'm going to be airbrushing a base coat of Skill Colors Deep Blue. And then on top of that, I'll be mixing in a couple of steps of the Aquatic Turquoise Color from AK Interactive. I'm not going to do one and one but I'll probably do a 70-30 mix of the Dark Blue and the Turquoise, maybe a 50-50 mix. Um, a 30-70 mix of the dark blue and turquoise, and then we'll do a pure turquoise highlight. The reason being, I want a, a softer step progression. I found that if you jump from one color to the other too quickly, it ends up getting a bit of a fuzz to the airbrush because the color jump is so great. And step in the progression just allows me to um, create a bit of a softer, smoother blend uh, much more quickly. The color choice I've done for the base is um, Scale Colors Deep Sea Blue, Aquatic Turquoise, and AK's Blue Green, which gives me a, as the names of the paints suggest, a turquoisey uh, teal blue green color progression. It's blue with a hint of green or a greenish tone to it. And this, I think, will help balance out the red without being too overtly Christmassy. I want it to veer away from having a boring black or gray or sort of metallic. Um, base color, and I wanted something that would complement the bright red armor that would be sitting on top of it, 
and really help to elevate and pop the miniatures. So the reason being um, behind why I chose these three colors, that's pretty much it. And then for the infantry, I'm going to be airbrushing a base coat of AK's reddish black on top of a black primer. And then from there, I'm gonna airbrush burnt red and uh, blood red. Uh, we're basically gonna go from one to one to one, burnt red acting as an intermediary color. I'm not gonna go too heavy with the blood red all over the miniature, but as I airbrush up, I wanna start focusing in on the upper part of the miniature. We're looking at the torso, the head, the shoulder pads, and the backpack. I wanna have this model, or I wanna have a, a strong top to bottom contrast because our goal is to have the model pop from three or four feet away. And we're not gonna focus too much effort on the legs and the feet in particular. So now that we've airbrushed our miniatures, it's time to move on to the next step. And for sequencing, I'm actually gonna do my oil wash first and let it dry on the miniature while I paint the base. And then I think if I can put it all together once it's all set. So the color that we're gonna be using is Payne's Gray. And this is just an art store brand. It's not specifically made for miniatures, but I like it because it's um, fairly inexpensive. And you get a large tube. I think this is about $7, $8 from a local art store downtown near the University of Toronto. I like using Payne's Gray as well because this is, despite what the tube indicates, a blue-black wash. Um, very similar to Drakenhoff, a little bit on the darker side and a little bit more on the desaturated side. And it gives the wash a very nice sort of um, bluish cold tone that works especially well with colors like reds and greens. So I have this already mixed up in a, uh, a jar pre-mixed. This is probably a ratio of two and a half uh, to one mineral spirits to oil paint. I'll make sure I have an old um, shitty brush on hand just to constantly mix and retweak, just because I'll be smashing in and ruining the tip. And then I'll have another synthetic oil brush I use to actually apply the oil wash. So I'm using one from Green Stuff World, a bit of a hook tip, but not a big deal because I'm not really caring about the accuracy. And all we're going to look to do to apply it to the miniature, load up our brush, and we're just going to drab it into areas where the creases and crevices, and we're just using capillary action to pull the color. Now, once you've pulled off most of the color from the brush and from the bristles, you want to give it a quick rinse. And while the brush is still damp or still moist, take a look at the area that you've just done an oil wash on. You're going to see a wet area and a dry area. Um, and you're already starting to see what's happening here where the pigment is pulling to the edge of this border between wet and dry and then sitting there. If you leave it untouched, it's going to dry with a tide mark and it's going to stain and leave an unsightly sort of um, edge or a line that you don't want. So what I always like to do is with this damp brush, go back in and just re-wet the entire flat surface. If I do this immediately after I've applied my first wash and my first um, line, it helps to um, clean up or erase any messiness. And then because the entire surface is wet, any pigment that's sort of sitting there, it's just going to keep flowing to an edge and then sit there and we're not going to end up with any sort of um, crazy stain. One thing to keep in mind as well with oil paints is if you over it too much, um, the oil paint actually won't sit in the crevice unless you do a gloss varnish pass to help break the surface tension. I'm choosing not to do that largely because the gloss varnish does impact the final tone or saturation of the red that I do want to avoid. Even with a, a matte varnish on top, unless you do like three or four coats of testers to coat, and even still, um, it doesn't quite flatten the gloss look, and I want to avoid having that. That's why I've avoided doing a gloss varnish on my miniatures. What that does mean is you have to be careful, very particular with the ratio of mineral spirits to um, pigment or oil paint for your wash. And you have to be very careful after you apply the wash to clean up and neaten up your edges. So once we've airbrushed our base, we're going to go back in with our AK Aquatic Turquoise and our AK Blue Green, and we're going to apply some highlighting using a stippling technique. 
So I'll be using a large Artist Opus dry brush for this, or we can use any makeup brush or brush with a soft bristle tip. And then with the turquoise, I'm just going to gently um, dab and stipple at the front of the base, wrap it around to the back to create a sort of scuffed and worn texture. And then I'm gonna go back in with my blue green, some tweezers and some pluck foam, and I'm just gonna dab some really sharp highlights to simulate some of the battle damage and um, trimming around the edge of the base just as like the final highlight pass. Before I paint any other details, I actually want to go back in with the airbrush and do a bit of a blue glaze. It'll help to knock back some of the, the roughness of both the initial airbrushing as well as the stippling that I've done on top. And it'll help to just soften that transition, add a little bit more blue and this coolness in the shadow. That does get a little lost because it ends up looking a little bit flat right here. So I have some dark sea blue loaded into my airbrush. It's fairly diluted. Um, I would say one part paint to four or five parts water. And what we're going to do is we're just going to gently glaze this into the shadows or the, the, the rear of the base. It's soft enough that it's like a, a thin glaze or like a, like a watercolor. And you can do this by hand instead of using your airbrush if you want. A little more control in the application. And just adding a few coats helps to soften up that initial airbrush transition, adds a bit more of that blue tone, especially into the center of the base. And also helps to knock back some of these stippling, uh, especially near the back of the base. And that way we get a sort of subtle, um, bright to mid tone transition on those highlights. The first detail that I wanna paint on all of these bases is anything that's gonna be in a silver sort of metallic color. And we're just going to do this with some Scale Colors Black Metal. And then we'll do a wash of Games Workshop's Gnome Oil on areas that require uh, things like vents um, and any sort of meshed areas. And I'll do the same thing for any gold elements I want in the base using Scale Colors Negro Gold. Much like with the silver, just apply a base coat with the gold. And then using a heavy application of Gnome Oil to help shade and darken any crevices and recesses. Using some AK Black, I'm going to actually start black lining and uh, base coating all of the areas are going to be uh, painted in sort of this black gray um, grating. To highlight these black grates, we're going to be using three colors, but AK Rubber Black, Ash Gray, and Graphite. We're going to use the brush to paint these two, and then we're going to use some sponge and a tweezer to stipple on the Graphite as our ship weathering. We'll apply a quick base coat over the area. And while it's still wet, I'll quickly go in with my ash gray. And then while it's still wet again, the graphite. But I want to make sure that I'm quickly blending it so that the brightest point of the graphite highlight um, isn't necessarily pure graphite, but it's mixed in with that rubber black and that ash gray. And then using our sponge, we're just going to lightly dab some of these edges and corners and then right near the edges where it might be adjacent to some blue or other paint element, I'm going with a brush and just gently stipple in or dot in some of that texture. Some of the bases have some white elements, things like these little arrows and markers, and then occasionally I'll put in some white text, but I tend to save that for larger bases like Brenda Drops and Heroes. The color recipe we're using, it's actually the same recipe that we use to paint the white on the miniatures as well. So a little preview there. Medium C gray as the base coat, and then we're highlighting up through pale blue and greenish white. Unlike the white on the model itself, I don't actually take the white elements on the base up to pure white. So the next thing to paint on the base are the yellow bits, and we're going to see these in some of the tubes and piping on some of the larger bases. So you can see them here, there's some tubes running along, as well as elements on some of the bases where I want to have some caution stripes. And this is largely just to tie into a bit of that classic second edition Kings Workshop feel, and also to help sell the industrialness of the environment, and then introduce a little bit of extra color into the base. So for this, we're going to be using some um, AK World War I French Brown as a base coat, and we're going to hot it up through number six Earth Yellow, Volcanic Yellow, and then Yellow. For painting the black stripes, for the caution stripe, we're just going to use AK Black. And then we'll go back in with a final edge highlight of the yellow. 
I'm using the same paint, gray oil paint that we did as the wash on the red armor. We do the exact same thing to the base, focusing mainly on um, black lining, different armor panels. I don't want to coat the base. I just want to make sure that I am black lining all the little details. So when I get to an area like on the flat where it sort of pools, let's get some um, clean mineral spirits and wipe it away before it comes on. To paint the magenta glow on our bases, I'm going to be using fluorescent magenta from AK. Now this paint out of the bottle is very translucent and has almost no coverage. So what I like to do is start off with a dot of white paint at the center of where I want the source light to be. I'm then going to go in with an airbrush glaze of the fluorescent magenta, and this will help me do the sort of OSL glow around the, uh, the source light itself. Once I've done the airbrush glow, I will then go in by hand and apply a stronger glaze in the center inset circle before going back in with the dot of white paint to finish off the actual source light itself. So with everything on our base painted and with our miniatures airbrushed and oiled, it's now time to finish off by painting the black trim on the base, and then we can assemble everything together. One of the advantages of having magnets on all of my bases already, um, without having a model on top to actually hold onto, it can be tricky to paint the base trim black because obviously it's kind of awkward to have to hold the top and bottom. So I have a little magnetic sheet glued onto a 32 millimeter base. And what I like to do is I just pop it on and very easily paint the base from black. It'll probably dry by the time I wrap around the full circle and I can move along. So I'll just be using some AK black. And we'll very carefully paint the base trim, bring it all the way up to the edge and make sure not to overpaint onto any of the top blue elements. Nice and quick and easy, and we'll just do it for all of the bases. We'll glue everything onto them, and then we'll move on to actually painting the miniature itself. So the first major part of painting our Blood Angels infantry model is to tackle the armor. And the colors I'll be using for this on top of our airbrush base coat, we're going to continue with another highlight pass of Blood Red. And this is largely just to polish up what we have on the airbrush, clean up a bit of the oils, and start blocking in some of the major highlights particularly focusing on the head, shoulders, chest pat, as well as the backpack. I do apply a bit of the blood red highlight on the lower legs and knee pads if they're there, along with the thigh plates, but that's mainly just to neaten up any sort of edges and just um, add a bit of brightness to the lower half of the body. I don't really highlight the uh, lower part of the legs or the feet at all, and I largely ignore the back as well because we're going for a tabletop model. I want that high contrast top to bottom highlight to shadow. From Blood Red, I go into Scarlet Red for my highlights. And here I'm largely focusing, again, top of the torso, so head, chest, shoulders, backpack, and then the arms, making sure that I pick out each of the individual fingers and really get them to pop. And then my final highlight is with AK's Amaranth Red. And with this, I'm only focusing on the front plate, the forehead, the collarbone, and very top half of the chest, as well as the top points of the shoulder pads. It's a little bit on the orange side, so I do want to avoid going too heavy with this highlight color. Too much of it and the armor turns orange. You want just enough to really hit that bright saturation point without steering too much from the red of your mid and shadow tones. With the armor done, it's now time to move on to the silver metallics. I like to keep my army metallics fairly simple. And so for the silvers, I'm only using uh, a couple of simple colors. I'm gonna start with the base coat of scale colors, black metal. I'll make sure to get an even base coat over all of the metallic areas. And then I will do a heavy non oil wash from Games Workshop. Make sure that you use the non gloss version. And then I will go back in with a highlight of scale colors, heavy metal. On the basic line infantry, I'll just go right into the heavy metal. If I'm painting vehicles, characters, or maybe metal areas that have a larger flat surface area that requires more touch-ups, I'll go back in with black metal first on top of the non all wash before doing another final highlight of heavy metal. 
For the black detail elements, we're mainly looking at things like weapon casings, although on some of my more elite infantry and then on the vehicles, I will have armor panels and areas that are going to be in black. So the color recipe for this is AK black, rubber black, ash gray, graphite, and warm green. So I'll start with a base coat of black, and then from there I'll quickly highlight through rubber black and ash gray using a combination of glazing and a little bit of wet blending between rubber black and ash gray to quickly work through some quick blends before going back in with a edge highlight of graphite. I tend to focus on the top edges, although again on character models, vehicles, and larger surface areas where it does warrant a little more attention. I'll do edge highlights all the way around as opposed to just focusing on the top surfaces. And then I'll finish off with some dot highlights of warm gray on the sharpest top corners. My recipe for doing the gold on the armor is different from the gold I use on the base. This is intentional. On the base, I use Scale Colors Negro Gold, which is a more sort of old polished gold color, a little bit more on the yellow side. For the infantry, I'm using Scale Colors Decayed Metal, which is more on the red bronze side, and then Vallejo Gold for the highlight. The Decayed Metal is a nice dark color that forms a nice base coat to work on top of. And then Vallejo Gold is actually a fairly diluted um, or watery color in the ball. You can make sure you mix it very heavily to get a nice uh, consistency that coats well. But when you actually paint it on the model, it coats smoothly and evenly without a lot of work. And I really like using it. On thinner areas, you can very quickly glaze in the color because it's so diluted. And on larger surfaces, you can build up the color very quickly and very easily to get a nice smooth progression. Any white details and elements like iconography or freehand, perhaps even the, the wings on the Blood Angel logo on the left pads, I use the same recipe that I use on the base. So it's AK medium sea gray, pale blue, greenish white, and then I'll take it up to pure white on the brightest highlight spots. And really we're just base coating and highlighting stuff through each of these four colors. From medium sea gray to pale blue, you can probably do the steps one after another, but from pale blue into greenish white, you'll want to do a couple of transition colors, largely because the value jump between the two is quite large and greenish white doesn't coat as readily or as easily on pale blue. Once you've worked your way up to pure greenish white, I usually reserve the pure white highlights for the very tops of the icons when I'm looking at the shoulder, shoulder pads, or if I'm painting some freehand, um, just for the very top edges and edge highlights. So some of my more elite infantry, along with my characters, and then some of the special weapons in my squads have bindings and wraps. And I've chosen to do this in a, a more pastel violet color. So the color of speed is AK Tenebrous Gray, Violet Red, and then a progressive mix of Violet Red into Pale Sand. Tenebrous Gray acts as the base coat, and then if the bindings wrap all the way around, I'll go straight through Violet Red into that Pale Sand. But on a model like my Dawnbreaker Infantry, where my spears are actually a haft with bindings wrapping in a cross pattern, I'll leave the haft in Tenebrous Gray, and then I'll only paint and highlight the bindings with the Violet Red and Pale Sand. To paint any sort of green gems as well as the eye lenses, I'm using a blue to green recipe or color progression that seems like it's quite a number of colors. You can probably cut down on a few if you don't mind doing any mixing, but because I'm looking to quickly uh, assembly line and speed paint my army, I'm using all of these colors so I don't have to do any mixing and I can just bang them out one at a time. So I start with a base coat of dark sea blue and then on the larger gems, like on the shoulder pads and on the chest plates, it's a highlight step progression through AK's dark green, deep green, light green, frog green, and livery green. And then on the top most corner to get the um, sort of spot highlight or sort of the light refraction happening on the gem, I'll do a blue dot and a white dot to capture that highlight. For the eyes, it's the exact same recipe, but because of the size of it, I cut down on a couple of the colors. So for the eyes, it's again the base coat of dark sea blue, and then I work through dark green, light green, and livery green, focusing my highlights onto the internal part of the eye. 
On the outer corners, I'll then do that blue dot and white dot to capture that refracted highlight again. I will have a separate video that covers painting the various types of powered weapons that I have in my army. So I'll break those recipes down in greater detail on flatter bladed surfaces. Um, I'll show you the process more in depth, but for the purpose of this tutorial, because I am painting a Perdition Maul, I want to have a subtle energy glow coming from the coil in the haft of his Perdition Mace. Because this is a flame weapon, I want to have that sort of white to yellow to orange to red progression. So the colors I'm going to be using are AK's Pastel Yellow to form the base coat, and then on top of that I'll be glazing in some highlights of yellow, volcanic yellow, and then subtly into blood red and black red before going back in with some white in the hottest parts of the coil. And once everything's painted on the model, there's probably going to be a bit of messiness, especially in around the hands. And then maybe anywhere on like the chest pad where I have some gold bleed over, maybe on the helmet, especially on these Dawn Breakers where I have the special filigree, um, any sort of mispaint around the eyes. I'll go back in with my blood red, scarlet red, and amaranth red just to do some touch-ups on the edges. The final thing that we're going to be doing on our infantry model is applying a glaze with the airbrush. So I'm going to be using Games Workshop's new wash for this. Druchi Violet applies very easily through the airbrush without any dilution. And then at a low PSI, I'm going to spray from underneath the model, applying a thin layer, and then using the airbrush to air dry each step before applying another layer. I'm going to focus this on the lower half of the model as well as the back, and when I'm spraying from underneath, I am making sure to only capture the color on the uh, shadow areas and not hitting up any of the highlight parts. And with that, our Dawnbreaker Space Marine is complete. You can really see how a simple limited palette in combination with high contrast can create a color scheme that is quite easy to execute and also looks very striking on the tabletop. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe for more awesome weekly content. As always, until next time, happy hobbying.